Welcome to White Lecture Online. By request of a, a certain number of viewers, we're going to continue, at least for a while, with astronomy. And we haven't really covered the planets yet, not in the kind of detail we would like to. So here we're going to start with Mercury, the first planet in our solar system, the one closest to the sun. And yes, we have some nice pictures here. I don't know how well you can see that uh, on the camera. But you can see here that Mercury is completely covered with craters. Matter of fact, if you didn't take a close look, you would think that you might be looking at the moon because there's a lot of similarity between Mercury and the moon. They roughly have the same coloration. They both are covered in craters. But if you look at a picture from the moon and you look at a picture of, of Mercury, there's one big difference between them. You have the big dark regions on the moon called the mare, which are large lava fields with far fewer craters. You don't have those on Mercury, so that's one way you can tell the difference. So we're going to do quite a few videos on each of the planets. We're going to talk about a lot of the details. But first, what we're going to do is a simple overview of the basic properties of the planet Mercury. And then we're going to do separate videos in more detail about certain topics of the, of the planet. But uh, here you are. That's Mercury. And let's take a look at the details that we want to cover later on. So it's, gives, it's a nice idea to get kind of an overview. So what we're going to do here is look at various kind of properties, sizes, uh, distances, and so forth relative to the rest of the solar system. In a lot of cases, we're going to compare it to what it's like on the Earth. For example, the average distance to the sun is about 58 million kilometers as opposed to about 150 million kilometers for the Earth which means it's about 38.7% the distance between the Earth and the Sun. So it's a little bit over one-third the distance. Now, expressed in astronomical units, for the Earth, of course, that's one, so here it's 0.387. One big difference between Mercury's orbit and the Earth's orbit is that it's much more elliptical. The, the eccentricity of the orbit is a lot larger in such a way that when it gets the closest at perihelion, it's only 46 million kilometers away. And when it gets at its farthest point, aphelion, it's at 69.8 million kilometers, which gives it an eccentricity of 0.206. In other words, the difference between the average and the maximum distance away from the sun is 20.6% as opposed to the Earth, it's only about 1.7%, so you can see that the numbers are much tighter. There's not a lot of difference between the farthest and closest point to the Sun for the Earth in the Earth's orbit, as opposed to Mercury. It's a really big difference. Also, the inclination of the, of the, um, the, inclination of the orbit relative to the orbit of the Earth. The, er the orbit of the Earth defines what we call the ecliptic, of the, and that's basically the plane of the solar system. The inclination of the orbit of Mercury is 7 degrees relative to the ecliptic, which is the largest difference of any of the eight planets in the solar system. Pluto has a greater inclination, but of course that's no longer considered one of the basic eight uh, planets. It's now considered an extra, well, what we call a trans-Neptunian object or a dwarf planet. The orbital period is about 88 days for Mercury versus 365 days for the Earth. The orbital, the rotation period, I want to jump to the rotation period, is 59 days versus about one day for the Earth. It's actually slightly less than 24 hours for one rotation of the Earth, but notice it's 59 days for Mercury. If you take the ratio between the orbital period and the rotation period, you get exactly 3 to 2. So there's a 3 to 2 what we call spin orbit resonance for the planet Mercury because the gravitational attraction between the Sun and Mercury is so strong that it basically tightly locked it into that 3 to 2 ratio. And we'll talk more about that later as well. Notice a solar day, if you stand on Mercury, not recommended because it's not a very hospitable place, but if you were to be able to stand on Mercury and watch a complete Mercury day go by, it would take 176 Earth days between, let's say, noon and the very next Mercury day noon as well. First is only 24 hours for the Earth. The orbital speed, notice it's quite quick. It travels at 48 kilometers per second versus the Earth 30 kilometers per second. Anytime you're close to the Sun, you have to travel faster or you'll fall into it or 
if you travel slower, actually, you'll, yeah, slower you'll fall into it, you go faster, you move away from it. So in order to stay in orbit around and the orbit for Mercury, you have to travel at 48 kilometers per second. The inclination of the equator, which is really interesting, Mercury is virtually not inclined. So as it goes around the Sun, the north-south pole is almost completely vertical, a slight difference from zero, 0 0.03 degrees, and it took quite a while before we were actually able to measure that relatively accurately. Everybody, of course, knows that the Earth has an inclination of 23.5 degrees, which is the cause of our seasons. The topographic range, when you look at Mercury, it's not as interesting because you don't have very high mountains or very deep valleys. The difference between the highest peak in Mercury and the lowest valley in Mercury is about 9 kilometers. So for the Earth, that's 20 kilometers, the difference between the top of Mount Everest and the bottom of the deepest ocean. Number of moons, Mercury does not have any moons as far as we know. Earth, of course, has the one moon. Coming over here, Looking at the diameter of the planet, it's 4,880 kilometers in diameter, which makes it roughly about 3,000 miles, as opposed to the Earth having a diameter of 12,756 kilometers, so the diameter is about 38%, a little bit more than one-third the diameter of the Earth. Circumference is also the same ratio, but notice the Earth has a circumference of 40,000 kilometers, about 25,000 miles, Mercury, 15,000 kilometers. Now, you may think that Mercury is a small planet, which of course it is, but if you were able to land on it, it would still look vast in size. Imagine 15,000 kilometers to get around it. So it's a small planet, but nevertheless, that's still a big distance. Mass, 3.3 times 10 to the 23rd kilograms, as opposed to the Earth, which means it has a mass of about 5.5% the mass of the Earth. Roughly, you would need 20 Mercuries to balance out one Earth if you were to able to put them on a scale. Density, they're very close in density. Mercury is slightly less, 5.43 grams per cubic centimeter versus the Earth. Even though Mercury has a higher percentage of metal in its core, so from a uncompressed density, as we call it, Mercury is more dense than the Earth. There's more metal inside the planet. However, since the Earth is a much bigger planet, the metal is compressed to much higher densities at the center, so the average density because of that, because of that compression factor, it's actually a little bit higher for the Earth than Mercury. Escape speed is the speed you need to get away from the planet. For the Earth, it's 11.2 kilometers per second, about 7 miles per second, or about 25,000 miles per hour. For a rocket to be able to get away from the Earth, let's say to go to the Moon or another planet, you have to travel at least this speed. That's the escape speed. For Mercury, it's quite a bit less because it's a much smaller planet. The surface gravity, accordingly, is also much smaller. The acceleration due to gravity at 3.7 meters per second squared versus 9.8 meters per second squared, which is about 38%, which is kind of interesting that these two numbers are the same. It just happens to be that way. Uh, no particular reason for that, except that the density and the size kind of work out that way. The albedo is a measure of how much of the light is reflected from the surface. It turns out that mercury is kind of a darker grayish color, and so the albedo, the light reflected, is relatively small, as compared to the Earth, which has much more cloud cover, which more readily reflects the sunlight. The surface temperature, that's the interesting part of mercury. Because it's so close to the sun, the daytime temperature can be as high as 800 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 427 degrees centigrade. Enormous. Of course, that will vary a little bit because you can see that the distance to the sun varies quite a bit, which of course would affect the temperature, but it can be as high as 800 degrees Fahrenheit. At nighttime, and the night times are very long indeed, the temperature will drop to minus 290 degrees Fahrenheit which is about minus 180 degrees centigrade for an average temperature of about 167 degrees centigrade, which means the average is still above boiling point, but the range is absolutely enormous. Notice that the range, range of about 600 degrees centigrade or 600 centigrade degrees. So it's an absolute amazing difference between nighttime and daytime temperature wise on the planet Mercury. Atmospheric pressure, very minor. 5 times 10 to the minus 15 bar. For the Earth, it's about 1 bar, or about 1,000 millibars, as they say. So you can see that there's virtually no atmosphere on the Earth. 
kind of an interesting way of looking at it. If you were to collect all of the atmosphere of Mercury in one place, it would have a mass of only about 10,000 kilograms. Which, if you think about it, that means that if you take the air in like in a gymnasium on the Earth, you take all the air out of a gymnasium at the high school, for example, that would be about the equivalent of the entire atmosphere of Mercury. So you can see it's not very, very dense and it's uh, you know, very rarefied. The content of that atmosphere is oxygen, sodium, hydrogen, potassium, and magnesium, but also, again, in very, very tiny quantities, so not like on the Earth. So it would be correct to say that Mercury virtually has no atmosphere. Magnetic field, interesting, because initially we thought that Mercury probably did not have any magnetic field at all, but by sending the spacecraft messenger to take some readings there uh, in the years past, we notice that there's a small amount of magnetic field, which means there must still be some generation of electricity of current inside the planet causing these magnetic fields to exist. It's about 1% the strength of the Earth's magnetic field, means it's a lot weaker, but nevertheless it is there, it's measurable, so there must be some dynamo effect going on inside the planet. For your reference, one Tesla is about 10,000 Gauss, so you can see in terms of Tesla it's not a very strong magnetic field but compared to Earth, about 1%. So that gives you kind of an overview of the planet, but we're going to get into a little bit more about describing what it's actually like on the planet because that's really the more interesting part. These are just numbers, it's good to know, but it's more interesting to look at the planet itself and to kind of imagine what it would be like to be able to walk around and what would it be like to go through a, a Mercury day, for example. Is there water or ice on the planet, things like that. Those are some interesting things that we'll find. But anyway, that's the start for the section on Mercury. Hopefully you stay tuned and we have some other videos for you to come.